Dallas Cowboys just hired uh, Mike McCartney. What are mm -hmm. your thoughts about that? Well, initially it wasn't something that blew me away, but let's give respect where respect is due to Mike McCarthy. He's a guy that's coached in the National Football League in the head coaching position for 13 years, went to the postseason nine times, and he's hosted that He's hosted that uh, Lombardi Trophy. He's a champion. And so when you look at it from that perspective and you consider all the, the things that go into being a head coach and the fact that he did it for 13 years, with a strong degree of success. You have to give respect where respect is due and in all seriousness applaud the hire by Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and, and, and McCarthy seems like a nice enough guy. It was a shame how he ended up going out. It's one thing when the team doesn't look good enough without Aaron Rodgers, obviously, but it's another thing entirely um, when you go out the door and you're pushed out the door and the belief is that you're archaic, uh, that you're beyond, you know, the times have passed you by and so many people were questioning that about him. You would think that somebody that's accomplished what he accomplished deserved a little bit better than that. And that's not what happened. We don't know whose fault that is because we never heard Aaron Rodgers say anything negative about him. Uh, publicly, but you don't know whose fault that was. So to see him get a second bite at the apple, uh, he definitely deserved it. And, and I think in all seriousness, we need to be happy for him um, and give him a vote of confidence and go from there. Um, what is your picks for this weekend? Obviously, we got four um, um, playoff games. What are your thoughts? Who do you think is going to win the, uh, those four games? Well, you know, I think Kansas City and Baltimore are going to win their games. Um, I think that all season long, what we've been seeing from them, I think Deshaun Watson has a better shot than Ryan Tannehill of upending that, assuming that offensive line can protect Deshaun Watson. But in the end, we've been waiting for the Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes collision course. So in all honesty, my pick is sort of wishful thinking, wishing that it's Baltimore against Kansas City. Let's see what they got um, in the AFC, in the NFC. I'm sorry. You got San Fran. Uh, they're about to do their thing, and we'll see what happens with them. Obviously, Green Bay uh, against uh, Seattle. We'll see what happens with that. I do believe that the home teams are going to prevail. The two top seeds will prevail. I think it'll be San Francisco against Green Bay uh, with, with, with a berth on the, for the Super Bowl on the line. And then, um, obviously, you've been talking about Luka and Porzingis all day, but what are your thoughts about the, uh, them and, I guess, Luka's um, progression from year one to year two? Well, I haven't been talking about Kristaps Porzingis because oh. I need to see more. He's been out the last four games. Um, we know that he's got some injuries, and he's coming back from a nasty injury when he was with the New York Knicks. As everybody knows, I'm a native New York and a diehard New York Knicks fan, so it was unfortunate to see him go. I know he can play. I know he's not a scrub, uh, but he's not a superstar yet anyway. And so to me, the key is his elevation because what we're seeing from Luka Doncic, this brother's special. He's on another level. To be 20 years of age, to be averaging what he's averaging, putting in points, back-to-back, 30-point triple-doubles, all of this other stuff, this brother is sensational. He's a sensational basketball player, and the sky's the limit for him. Whether or not that's going to be the same for the Dallas Mavericks depends on the development and continued growth of Porzingis. We don't know whether that's there or not. We'll find out. Um, I know he can play. I know he can shoot. But I know that when you're 7'3 with those skills, you should be a hell of a lot better. Now, obviously, injuries had something to do with that, derailing him. But I also think that when you're 7'3 and you're that slim, because you, could, you have such an advantage due to your height, people are going to chop you down and try to get physical with you. We're seeing that to a lesser degree with Anthony Davis in L.A. Guys are putting a body on him. They're making him feel those elbows, those forearms, and what have you. They're basically reminding him that no matter how skilled you are, there is a way to chop you down. And I think the same is going to be incorporated against Chris Porzingis. The more vulnerable and susceptible he reveals himself to be to physicality. You can't pull that with Luka Doncic. The brothers just got a complete offensive game. The best way to go at Luka Doncic is to attack him when he's on the defensive side of the ball. But offensively, there's nothing you could do with this kid. He's that special. And so I think that as long as we're looking at it from that perspective, he has all the potential in the world. What Dallas has remains to be seen. We're going to have to see a lot from Porzingis moving forward. And then we have uh, Los Angeles coming on Friday. What are your thoughts about that matchup with uh, LeBron and uh, Doncic again? No, I don't give a damn. It was nice to see them go against each other early in the season. They both had triple doubles and over 30 points. That was nice to see. But I'm one of those guys that I like to see it during the regular season, but I look for what can I anticipate come 
postseason time. And that's going to depend on the development of the Dallas Mavericks. Remember, Anthony Davis is traveling, but we don't even know he's going to play that game. LeBron James is in his 17th year. He is 35 years of age, and I might be one who demands that he shows up against Kawhi Leonard because Kawhi Leonard called him out, but I'm not going to knock him if he has less energy than a 20-year-old in his second year in the league when he's 35 years old and in his 17th season in the NBA. I'm going to show a little bit more compassion and respect for a three-time champion and a four-time league MVP to put so much mustard on a regular season game. I'm not going to do that to him. Um, It'll be nice if he shows up and plays lights out, but it doesn't really amount to much because we know what we're looking for from LeBron takes place in April, May, and June. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take it. Sure. Thank you. All right. Hey there, NBA fans. For exclusive NBA content, subscribe to Fanatics View YouTube down below.